Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Chase for Rocky Mountain. Thank you so much for checking in. And today we have the Bell MX-9 Adventure with MIPS. So the MX-9 Adventure is one of the helmets that we have used a lot. In fact, I know multiple riders right now have this helmet. They use it on the dual sport adventure rides that we've been doing for years now at Rocky Mountain. If you have not yet, watch those videos. We go on these really cool adventure rides all over the place. We document them, some really cool video series. But that being said, MX-9 Adventure, it's one of our more popular helmets here, and really here's why. It's affordable, so you're anywhere from 230 to 370 depending on which model you go with. So it's a good budget-friendly helmet, and the MX-9 Adventure, looking at it, and if you look at it on paper, it's not the most flashy helmet that is out there, but it does everything well enough that if you're shopping and you're looking just to get into a good helmet that's not gonna be, you know, that four, five, six hundred dollar range, this would definitely be one helmet that we would recommend. So we're just gonna go through and talk about it, help you decide if the MX-9 Adventure with MIPS is what you do want to pick up. But before I get into that, I do wanna point out that there's really two options with this helmet. You have the standard version, but then you have the DLX. And there's about a $130 or $140 price jump to the DLX, and really, what you're upgrading to with this version, the only thing is going to be in the shield. So the DLX version comes with the Pro Tint Shield. And what that does is that it is light sensitive. So if you're riding in bright sunlight, it will automatically tint. But then as the sun goes down, or if it's a cloudy day, or if you get into shadows, it will automatically lighten itself. So if you don't like the idea of having to maybe bring sunglasses when you ride, and you want the shield to do that work for you, check out the DLX version. Aside from that, feature-wise, they're going to be the exact same. Now, as far as fitment goes, that's another thing about this helmet that myself and a lot of riders like. It is very, very comfortable. And that's kind of just been the standard when it comes to Bell helmets. Your DOT and ECE certified polycarbonate shell. You do have three different shell sizes with this just to give the best fit possible depending on the head size that you have. But remember, we do have a fit guarantee. If you get this helmet, if you don't like how it fits, send it back in brand new unused condition and we will give you free shipping both ways on that first exchange. So if you get a large, the Nash is a little bit too big, send it back, we'll send you a size medium, and we'll give you that free shipping both ways, that first exchange, to make sure you get the fit that you are happiest with. All right, so like I said, polycarbonate shell, I also just really like the look of the MX-9 Adventure. I think, you know, they did take the MX-9 dirt bike helmet and kind of utilize that shell design when they were making the MX-9 Adventure, but there are some differences here. You can obviously, you know, you're gonna have a visor on here that's gonna be built specifically for higher speeds, so you're not getting a lot of drag right there. And they did go through a little bit of an update just not too long ago where they updated the visor on this. You can see it's got more cutouts now to get more airflow going through there. And also what I do like about this too is they made this visor adjustable. And so you've actually got quite a bit of adjustability, more than we typically see with other helmets. So you just loosen this screw and that gives you, and I'm gonna say at least an inch, probably an inch and a half, maybe closer to two inches, of adjustment with the visor, which we actually like. We find ourselves, you know, whether it's dipping it to block the sun or if you are doing some off-road riding, you do want to block the roost, they give you that adjustment. And this screw too, it's plenty large that I think as long as you're not wearing a glove that's too thick, I don't think you would have any issue finding this and loosening and tightening that while you're actually riding. You can remove the visor if you do want to rock this without it. So if you're gonna be doing some street riding, you don't need the visor on there. You can take the visor off. They do have side plates that would just take the look or replace the side ports here with the visor. All right, let's talk about venting here. So with the vents, you've got this vent right here on the mouth guard, which you can open and close. You've got these vents right here on the chin bar. Now keep in mind these vents on the chin bar, although they're not that big, you cannot open and close those. And then up here on the top, you do have these vents that are right here underneath the visor. And this is kind of one of those things I was talking about where it doesn't have the most features like some of the other helmets. And something that I would kind of point out there is with the vents, especially these underneath the, the visor, you're gonna get a lot of air going through there. And it would be nice if in cold temperatures you were able to close those so you're not getting that cold air going through the helmet. But again, at this price point, I can't really be too upset about that. But as you move up in price, you'll notice that a lot of the other dual sport adventure helmets will start to allow you to close off the vents as you go up a little bit. So just something to keep in mind there. But you've got these intakes here and then on the back, you can see you've got your exhaust vents to let that air circulate and then go out the back of the helmet. Now, as for the shield, you'll notice, and again, this is something that you see with your more budget-friendly helmets, is that you do have this big bevel down here on the bottom. So when you open this helmet, you've got multiple detents on the way up. Just something that I would 
you know, be mindful of is a lot of times when our rides, what we like to do is just barely crack that visor just to get a little bit more airflow going through there. This shield does have an anti-fog coating on there to help with that, but a lot of cases you're just going to want to barely crack that visor. Problem with this shield, or shield, excuse me, you want to crack the shield. The problem is, is that when you just want to crack it, this bevel is right in your line of sight. So it's pretty distracting. It's not really that functional when you're wanting to do that. So it's really just either closed or you have it open to the second or third detent. So again, just a couple things to be mindful of that we've noticed. But overall, like I said, you know, for the price, it does everything well. We've used it on a lot of rides, logged a lot of miles in it, been very happy with it. All right, so now, Let's take a look at the inside here. So something also to note is that the comfort liner on this compared to the MX-9 Moto version, if you have that helmet, the liner material is a little bit different. And the best way that I can describe it is that it's just got more of a softer, plusher feel to it. So to me, I just feel like this comfort liner is probably gonna be, I can pull one out here, a little bit more comfortable on all day rides. Just something that I've noticed. Pop this out. Harder to do at this angle. There we go. So there's that cheek pad. We'll get the other one out. All right. And then, last but not least, the comfort liner. All right. Comfort liner is out. A couple things I want to highlight here. So you have your EPS liner. You do have speaker cutouts here for a Bluetooth comms unit. That is another thing that I think is worth mentioning too is that if you're rocking a Bluetooth comms unit and you're using the clam style, or the clam style mount, We've used those on this helmet for years now. The fitment with the, a Bluetooth comms unit integrates really well with this helmet. Again, you've got those cutout, you, those cutouts for those speakers here on the inside. You've got your EPS liner, but another feature that we got to point out here is the MIPS liner system. So if you're not familiar with MIPS, it stands for Multi-Directional Impact Protection System. And the purpose for that is it cr creates a low friction zone or low friction surface between the comfort liner and the shell of the helmet. And the reason for that is to help mitigate those rotational forces. So keep in mind, you know, especially on a dual sport bike, you can be on the road, you're going higher speeds off road. When you crash, you're going forward, back, side to side. And so the idea is you want your head to not come to a violent stop when your head hits the ground. You want it to slip inside the helmet. And by doing so, it actually will help kind of reduce those forces. And it might seem like a simple concept, but trust me, it's been a lot of years of testing and MIPS liner system is just something that people know works and that's why you see it in so many helmets. Last thing I will mention too with the MX-9 Adventure, and this goes for Bell helmets in general, five year warranty, which is just gives you a little bit peace of mind when you are making that purchase. So that is it. That is the MX-9 Adventure with MIPS. Again, it's one of our more popular helmets here at Rocky Mountain just because it's comfortable, it feels lightweight, it does everything good enough, especially at the price. So if you have questions or comments, though, we would love to get those answered. So make sure to leave those down below. To grab one and see all the colorways available, click on the link or head over to RockyMountainATVMC.com. We are more than happy to give more feedback to you if you do have some. So you can leave your comments, your questions below. Don't just take my word for it. There's a lot of rider reviews on this helmet that you can go read if you're looking for more information before you decide to make that purchase. If you want to stay up to date on videos like this, get subscribed to the Rocky Mountain YouTube channel. Hit that notification bell, and that way you always stay up to date. I'm Chase, and we'll see you on the trails.